What's going on, everybody? We are back. The road to Thailand is well on the way. So in this video, we're actually going to be doing the process of applying for our DTV, the Destination Thailand Visa. All right. Now, this visa has a load of benefits. So what I'll do is I will give you some of the benefits um, in case you are thinking about, you know, coming to Thailand. This is a five-year visa that I'm going to be applying for. There's a number of pathways to migrate to Thailand and to stay there, you know, short-term, medium, medium-term, and long-term, right? Um, I have decided that I'm going to do the destination Thai visa because I believe it's the best fit for me and it gives me an opportunity to be there um, long-term, all right? So, just so you have some of the idea of what the benefits are, let's take a look. So what you're going to do is you're going to come to the ThaiVisa.go.th website, all right? And to get information on what the DTV visa is all about. So if I were to type in, just because I've had it, before, I've had it up before. All right, so the Destination Thailand Visa, all right? This is for workcation and Thai soft power related skills. So you could apply for this visa if you are in if you are applying for workation. So if you're a digital nomad, a remote worker, a foreign talent, or a freelancer, you could apply for this visa. If you are looking to do any of the Thai soft power related activities like Muay Thai, Thai culinary training, uh, medical training, you can uh, apply for this visa. You could also apply for this visa if you were looking to learn Thai as a language as well, right? And there's a couple other ones. Like if you're doing seminars, you could apply. And of course, medical treatment, um, you could apply for it as well, right? And all the information as to what you would need to apply is right inside of here. And then if you are coming with dependents, you are also able to bring across your dependents or your spouse as well on this visa, right? So all the information is on the website. And again, it is a five-year visa. It's a multiple entry visa, so you can come in and out the country um, as you please. And how this essentially works is that when you get the visa, you're able to stay in the country for 180 days at a time. So after the first 180 days, you could then go to the, uh, uh, the immigration and you could do an extension, which they're going to give you another 180 days, bringing you up to 360 days. When you get to that 360 day mark, you then have to leave. You could do a border run, go across to any one of the neighboring countries, go shop, go get some breakfast. And then you, when you cross back and come back into Thailand, they're going to give you a fresh 180 day stamp. And then again, same thing. End of the 180 days, you're going to go and extend, bring you up to 360. That's coming up to year two run across the border again and then it repeats until you until the visa is no longer valid five years later and then at that point you could apply for another dtv visa and kind of go from there all right so let me start the process for myself uh for applying for the visa so i am currently signed in right now and i'm going to uh, hit apply for new visa I am then going to type in the country that I am currently in. And so we got to put where my passport is coming from. Then we got to put our current location because you cannot apply for this visa if you are currently in Thailand. You need to be outside of the, of the, um, of the country to apply for it. And then it's going to tell you where... Um, when you see apply at Royal Thai Embassy, Ottawa, this just means this is the embassy that's going to be processing your application. So I'm in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, the Royal Thai Embassy in Ottawa, Canada is going to be handling all of our, of our um, applications. Then we need to fill in our passport information. So let's get uh, ordinary passport visa type this is where you're going to select your visa and keep in mind there are various visas that you can do with thailand all right all right so in the visa type you have a variety of visas that you can choose from um again 
Go through each of them. Make sure that you are applying for the visa that makes the most sense for your situation. For me, I am going to be going through with the destination Thailand visa. And then purpose of visit, I'm going to be selecting workation. And then from there, let's click on that. It shows that it's a multiple entry visa, so you can't select anything else because that's just the default. It's multiple entry. We're going to click on next. All right, so now we have to upload some information. We got to upload our bio data from our passport. We got to upload a photograph that was taken within six months. And then we got to fill out a bunch of personal information. And after we fill out the personal information, then you're going to have to put in your travel document. So we're going to put in our passport, our travel, our, our passport number, the place of issuance, fill out all that information. And then you're going to you're going to click on or fill out your current personal address and then the employment details and then go from there. So I'm going to fill out all of this sensitive information and we'll get right back as soon as I'm done. So after you fill out all of your personal information, uh, the next step is going to be your travel information. So you have to put your intended date of arrival and your intended date of departure, right? Now, this part is kind of silly because if you're coming there on a five-year visa, chances are you have no idea when you're going to be departing because you have to be there for it. You're going to be there for a minimum of a year, you know, so that this, this is a bit hard and fast. You kind of just, you know, kind of put anything in there. So my intended date of arrival, now you want to kind of get this correct. So again, you can't apply, you know, three months before your intended date. So you want to apply within a three month period, and then you'll have a good idea as to, you know, when you're going to be coming in. So my intended date is going to be the 22nd and again this could change right so you don't know when or not you, you might not know exactly when you're going to be coming in so try to get it as close to the date as, as you think possible now in terms of my departure date um again kind of kind of weird but you just have to put in a, a departure date so for me uh, i'm gonna put in you know I'm going to put in April because at least, oops, not 2026. I'm going to put in April. Oh, let's do, let's not do that. Let's do March, all right, 160. Because I, I, I remember you have to be, uh, the visa is going to give you 180 days stay at a time, all right? So I'm putting 162 days because, remember, again, we do have the 180 days that we can stay with the DTV visa. So I'm just putting that. Now, port of arrival is going to be international airport. Type of flight is going to be commercial. Now, the flight number, you can go and check out your flight number or your intended flight number um, just by going and checking out the various flights for the airline that you're going to go and uh, that you're, that you're going to use so i'm going to go and get my flight number right now so i got my flight number uh from my flight and i'm looking at jumping on that plane and you know so i got the flight number for the flight that i'm potentially gonna uh, use uh then you're gonna answer the next questions have you ever visited thailand for me it's a no have you ever applied for a thai visa no are you traveling as part of a tour group no and then, now again, this one, the accommodations, you don't know, or you might not know the exact hotel you're going to use, because remember, you could book up to three months out, um, and you need to have the visa before you're just going to go and jump on a plane, and you know, <laughs> if you're applying for the visa, chances are um, you're going to have to have the visa first in order to know exactly whether or not you're going to be even going to the country, right? Because if you were denied, then you might not be going to the, you might not be visiting that country anymore, right? So the accommodations, you just want to put it as best as, as, as you think, because again, um, 
this is something that they probably shouldn't ask for, but they just want to get an idea as to where you are staying, right? Um, you might not have this at the time that you are applying for the visa. Because again, I'm not going to book an accommodation if, like, let's just say if I know I needed the visa to go, um, I'm going to book the visa first before I go and book a flight or go and book the accommodation. So, you know, there's been some, you know, online chatter about that part of the application, but fill it out as best as you can. From everybody who I've seen that has gotten approved, they just filled it out as best as they can. So I'm going to go put that information in. And this is why you got to love Thailand. The accommodations are really, really affordable. So I'm on booking.com right now, and I'm just going to scroll through and see, you know, which ones are going to make the most sense for me. Now, this is what I'm this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be booking a hotel for a week, and during that week, that's when I will decide, you know, I'm I'm going to start to go around looking for places to rent for the next year, all right? So, I'm going to be staying in a hotel for a week and then going and looking for um my actual accommodations so let me find something that's make that's going to make sense i mean i'm going to be looking for something extremely cheap something like this 700 tt dollars for six nights that's almost like 100 us right so i actually would do something like this all right let's just take a real quick look at the uh at the place rooftop pool i mean none of this is really going to matter for me because this is just going to be you know where i'll stay for a couple of days and then i'm going to go and hunt for the actual long-term place i mean you know what this isn't this is more than enough now again i am just for the purpose of this application i am just trying to find a place to fill out the information. So I'm probably not even going to, I'm more than likely not even going to stay there because I think there is what? There is 2,400 properties. So I will actually take my time and go through um, and find the best deal in a neighborhood that's going to allow me to easily kind of move about and get onto the um, the, the, the the BTS or the public transportation the train system there um, so that I can get where I need to go. So, yeah. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to put, I'm just going to grab one, right? Let's say, let's say I do, bum, bum, bum. All right. For the purpose of this application, I'm just going to grab this one. And just looking at where this is on the map, all right? So I know this line right here, that's one of the BTS stations. And I would be over here. But again, I am not, I am more than likely not going to pick this. I'm gonna I'm gonna find something that's gonna be, you know, easy for me to get to a uh, to a train station so i would actually take my time and go through this but there's tons of properties this looks like the bus line or maybe this is a transit line but yeah again this is p- all part of the journey of 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 making the move right so i'm just gonna grab this hotel that i see and this is ram booty ram booty village and yeah we're gonna put this information into the part for the application now after putting all of that information in you have to fill out the rest of the look of the information so you got to upload a document indicating your current location so i'm going to get my driver's license and then financial evidence of um, of, um, of an amount no less than five hundred thousand Thai baht. Example a bank statement. So I'll upload a bank statement, and then if you have employment contracts or employment certificate in your country, or professional photo, a professional uh, showcase, remote worker, foreign talent, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, put all that stuff in there. Okay, so I'm gonna put that stuff in, and I'll be right back with y'all. Let me just get all that good stuff inside of there. And so once you have entered in all of your supporting documents you are then going to select done 
All right. Oh, I didn't want to show that picture. <laughs> but um, yeah, you're going to put in, it's going to have all of your, your declaration and whatnot, a whole bunch of, you know, sensitive info. So now that I am paying, um, every single, from what I've learned, is that every single embassy has a different cost. So even though um, they are telling you that online the application fee is 10,000 Thai baht, 10,000 Thai baht should have been, if we're doing it by Canadian, should have been $391. Call it 392 but the application that fee that I'm being told to pay is 650 Canadian, and that is a difference of, well, yeah, 650 Canadian, right? So 650 Canadian is pretty much 3,200 TT dollars. So it was supposed to be 10,000 Thai baht, $392 Canadian. But as we can see, I'm being told that I need to pay 650 Canadian. And like I said, it's it's different for every single um, every single embassy that you are applying to. It is different. So I'm going to go ahead and make that payment now. And yeah, we shall be done. So we're going to go ahead and make that payment. And then when they get back to me in a couple of days, we'll tie this video back up. And see what the approval process is like. Hopefully everything goes smooth and we don't have to provide any additional information. So after submitting the application with all of the documentation, I got a request from the Thai Visa uh, Embassy in Ottawa to submit more documentation. So uh, my visa is being routed through the Thai Embassy in Ottawa. And this is what they sent back. So they said, with regards to your e-visa application, reference, yada, 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 you need to submit your financial evidence of no less than 500,000 Thai baht. Now pay attention to what they said in red. When I had set, when I had submitted my bank document, I had just submitted the summary page, right? So what they said was, we want a copy of your recent bank statement in July, your checking or savings account containing detailed transaction information showing uh, the 500,000 Thai bot with your name stated on, on the account as the owner. So I submitted only the summary page of the financials. So what I did was I re-uploaded the document, but I had all of my transaction history for the month of July. Now, I know many people um, that I've seen online were saying they submitted, you know, three months worth of bank statements, six months worth of bank statements. The embassy in Ottawa only asked for the previous month, which for me would have been July. And I sent that with the detailed transaction information. Then they asked for business registration of the company authenticated. So what I had to do was I had to go to a notary public, bring my business registration to notary public. They would have notarized the document. I then had to go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to do what is called a verification and apostille. Um, that took three to five days for them to um, do what they have to do, authenticate the document for international use. And I got that documentation back. Then the third thing was the letter of employment confirming that you are still employed, the company letterhead that you are a remote worker. So what I did for this was I created a document. Remember, I'm applying as a business owner. So I created a document on my business letterhead saying that I am the owner of the company, the digital strategist in the company, and that all of my work is remote, right? So I submitted that. And last but not least, they asked to revise the employment contract um, that I had submitted because I did I had submitted a, co a copy of the document that wasn't signed. So all I did was um, one of the contracts that I got from uh, one of my clients. I had just submitted the the original document, but it wasn't a signed document. So all I did was I just submitted the signed uh, copy of the contract. Um, cause the original one, I did not, I would, I just send them, I just sent them the, the copy of the contract, but it wasn't the signed copy. So to, to fulfill that last uh, requirement, I just resubmitted the copy of the contract that I had actually signed on it. And that was all I needed. So I submitted everything. 
if we actually come down, they asked me for one more document after that. So remember, I submitted on the 13th. They got back to me. No, I submitted on the 14th and they got back to me two hours later, right? At 11, 14 a.m. And then if we actually come back down, right? This is when I realized the the business I, I, I had... um. I needed to get the authentication from the embassy. So they replied back to me at 4.18 p.m. the exact same day. All of the other documents were good, but then they contacted me and they're like, please authenticate your business registration by the Trinidad and Tobago government embassy consulate. And that's when I realized, oh, I have to go to the notary public and then I have to go to the to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, so that they could do their authentication and apostille. So once I submitted all of that, then on August 29th, I got the email stating that my destination Thai visa had been approved and that got approved on August 29th. So I started the process on August 14th when I made the payment, uploaded all of my documents, which obviously took a couple of days because I had to go to the, to, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And once everything was uploaded... By August 29th, I got the document. Now, just to give you some additional insight, when I submitted the the authenticated business registration document, I had actually done that on August 23rd. So I started the process on August 14th. As I said, took me a couple of days to wait for the ministry to do their 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 um, authentication of the document. Once I got it back, I got it back on the 23rd of August and I uploaded the rest of the, I uploaded the business registration on the, on the 23rd of August. And by August 29th is when I got the email saying, Hey, your visa application has been approved and you can go into your application and you can now download the document. So you can actually download it from the email that they send you. All right. You could download it from the email that they send you, or like if you just scroll on down, you can download it here, or you can log back into the Thai website and you can click on the download button and you can download your your um, your visa application here, your actual visa, because it's going to be a digital visa, all right? So you can click on download and download it here. And again, it says active and it tells you valid from the 24th to August 29th. So all of that is there for you, all right? And that was the application process for me to apply for the destination Thai visa.